Okay guys, I'm back at my alma mater, the University of North Dakota Aerospace, to show you guys one of the most common tracks that you can take to become an airline pilot. You don't have to have a degree to be an excellent pilot, but I think that it's a really good idea and there are a few specific and tangible benefits that you can get from going to school. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Okay, but why even go to college, right? Do you really need a degree to be an airline pilot? Well, not technically, and some of the best pilots I've flown with didn't go to college, but getting a degree is still a factor that plays a critical role in major airline hiring, making you an even more competitive candidate. Combining flight training with education is a good way to do two things at once while getting a normal college experience. When you're in an aviation degree program, your flight training is a part of your degree, just like any other major. You'll complete all of the general education classes that other college students have to take, like English, math, or public speaking, but the majority of your coursework will be aviation specific, including ground school for each rating. Aviation degrees also dive deep into aerodynamics, meteorology, and aircraft systems training, which are classes that many pilots training outside of college never get to experience. When I was in school, I even got to do a flight physiology course where I experienced the effects of hypoxia at 25,000 feet and a hypobaric chamber. After a few minutes, I couldn't even figure out how to put a square into the right box. While training like this isn't required to become an airline pilot, it was an invaluable and potentially life-saving experience. Not many college classes require you to do something as cool as flying an airplane, which is what all of these students and instructors behind me in the simulator bay are doing today. When you're a flight student at a collegiate program, you can kind of think of yourself as like a college athlete, right? You're gonna be spending an additional 12 to 15 hours per week studying for your flight lessons, flying, pre-briefing and debriefing lessons. Because when you're a normal college student, maybe you'll have a credit load of like 15 credit hours of class per week. But as a college aviation student, you're looking at more like 15 to 30 hours of work per week. Many collegiate programs have established partnerships with airlines all across the country. Each airline has unique interview programs and benefits for students and instructors. So spend some time looking into what each school has available. If you want to kickstart your aviation career, signing up for one of these programs can make a massive impact. Most collegiate training programs fall under part 141 FAA regulations. I think that's a good thing because if you want to become an airline pilot, the structured training can reduce cost while keeping you on a regimented training schedule to achieve your goals. Plus, depending on the degree you choose and the certification of the school, the requirements for an ATP or airline transport pilot certificate can be reduced from 1500 hours to 1250 or even 1000 hours of flight time. That makes getting to the airlines even faster. I can't get into all of the regulations in one video, but the FAA allows part 141 certified training schools more flexibility to use simulators and reduce the total flight time requirements for each pilot certificate. When I say that college programs make great airline pilots, I mean it. All of the procedures I followed in school were designed to mimic the ones I use on every airline flight. Now, it might seem silly to run flows or a challenge response checklist in a Piper or Cessna, but practicing these procedures early on makes transitioning to airlines that much more natural. One downside is that a Part 141 training syllabus isn't that flexible, and you don't have a lot of room to personalize your flight training. UND Aerospace operates one of the largest fleets of civilian flight training aircraft in the world. They fly over 120,000 flight hours per year and have trained over 13,000 professional pilots to date. When I came to UND, I had the chance to fly extremely advanced piston aircraft with glass cockpits and fly a whole range of simulators, including jet simulators, that helped prepare me for airline training. I absolutely loved my time spent here in Grand Forks. My professors became mentors and the friends I made here will last a lifetime. 
If you're looking for a place to kickstart your aviation career, UND Aerospace is one of the best options out there. I showed up to college with my private pilot certificate in hand, which I got in high school. If you have the opportunity to get a pilot's license before college, I totally recommend it. You'll likely save some money by doing it at a local flight school, and more importantly, you'll have the chance to see if flight training is the thing you really love before you commit to a college program. Just don't do any training beyond your private pilot certificate because almost every Part 141 training syllabus requires the rest of your ratings to be completed at the school through their program. A traditional four-year degree isn't the right path for everyone. UND's Phoenix campus is a great example of alternatives if you're an aspiring pilot and want to fly in the beautiful Southwest. A two-year associate's degree program coupled with flight training can provide a college education in a more cost-effective way. And if you want to maximize your flexibility while you build flight time, you could complete a 12-month fast-track course from zero hours to multi-engine instructor and choose to enroll in an online degree. A variety of degrees, including flight training, may be available at the schools you're researching. An aeronautical science degree with an emphasis on professional pilot training is one of the most common options. But you also might find something like aviation management, which combines a traditional business degree with aviation courses and flight training. I think that's one of the most valuable degree programs offered by schools like UND because you get a business background that could help your career grow in other ways beyond flying. There's something even more important going on inside aviation programs, and that's building your network. Unlike almost anywhere else in the world, you'll get the chance to be around literally hundreds of people that are passionate about the exact same thing that you are. And I can't think of almost anywhere else that's quite like being in a program like that. I've had friends and instructors that have become captains on my trips, chief pilots, and most of the instructors I've had have spread out to major airlines all over the world. So don't burn your bridges and get to know as many people in school as you can because it's one of the only places in the world that you'll get an opportunity like this. Okay, now let's talk about the not so fun stuff, money. It's no secret that flight training is expensive, especially if you want to combine it with college. Starting from nothing, it can cost anywhere from sixty dollars to $80,000 to get through your instructor ratings before you're paid instead of paying to fly for the first time. School tuition can vary widely between schools, and since most flight programs get you to the same goal anyways, just be wary of schools that are charging you significantly more than what you can find elsewhere. Having a solid financial plan before you start is critical so that you don't have to continually start, stop, and restart training. To reduce your flight costs, never show up to a lesson unprepared. Practice chair flying at home and fly as often as possible. Like most students, my personal financing came from a combination of loans, family help, scholarships, and personal savings. Because flight training is required by your degree, private and federal student loans for college can be applied to flight training. Once you're in college, there are a lot of scholarship opportunities that are open only to enrolled students. Everyone's financial situation is different, but having a plan in place so that you're not caught halfway through a flight course with no money left in your flight account is extremely important. Don't start until you know exactly how you're going to pay for it. Okay, I'm sure by now your head is spinning with information. There are so many paths to becoming an airline pilot, and this is the one that worked for me. If you have a question or comment about a future video, feel free to leave a comment below. There's a lot more coming soon.